Cabotogama Lake is a lake that looks and feels like the Canadian Shield, but it's in northern Minnesota. You know, it's paved roads to get here. But once you get out here in this Voyagers National Park, you know, most of the lake is undeveloped. And so there are 18 resorts on the lake. But once you get away from the resorts, once you get away from some of the cabins, you just have all this undeveloped water. And I think that's what makes this lake so unique in today's world. There's not many lakes that are this undeveloped. You look at Lake Cabotogama, the amount of structure is endless. You look at the islands, the offshore reefs, the offshore structure, I mean, it's just, it never ends. And when you look at an aerial view of this map, you're gonna see there's no shortage of spots. And you know, first time I ever fished with Tim up here, you know, he made a great point. It's probably some of the best advice anybody could give somebody trying to fish this lake. Don't get caught up on the spots. Don't fish spots, fish for fish. And so it's a deal where you really have to trust your electronics. Drive around the perimeter of these reefs, look for fish where you mark fish, get back on that waypoint, spot lock and get right over the top of those fish. If you do that and you, that's your process of finding fish all day, sooner or later you're gonna land on a good bite. Mm, that's so small after all, good fish. All right. Oh yeah, good fish. <laughs> this is leisurely <laughs> fishing, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good fish. All right. Slowly just dragging over that little... Yeah, I mean, you're just, basically, we're just hanging them over the side. <laughs> <laughs> they just, the rod tip gets heavy. But the bite is kind of funny, I mean... It... Uh-huh. Well, there's just so much competition down there for them. I mean, you, you just have to be in front of them, and they don't want to chase. They don't have to yeah. chase. Yeah, well, this is a good fish, Tim. Yeah, this is a good fish. I tell my kids they're all good fish. Well, yeah. But this between me and you, this may be a little better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A couple of head shakes and some big old boom, boom drops. Yeah, don't you love oh, that? Oh, God, yeah. They just yeah. bend that rod all the way down to the handle. <laughs> yep. I think we're going to see color here pretty There she oh, is. Oh, yeah. Nice walleye. Oh, yeah. Good walleye. Oh, fat. Look at oh, look Talking that. about having an auto. Oh! <laughs> you you know, Those are some head cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> nice Talking fish. about having a, a, a belly, all these fish. Wait till you see this fish. Oh, man. That's a walleye. <laughs> I mean, look, look at the belly on that fish. They are so healthy. Oh. Yeah, just completely full. Beautiful representation of what we have here on Cabotogo, that's for sure. Sometimes, you know, with jigging, you know, it's all about snapping that jig up off the bottom, letting that jig hit the bottom, getting that thump on the bottom, getting that flash when you're snapping that jig up. And other times it's just a matter of almost patting the bottom and keeping it within inches of the bottom. And sometimes it's just a matter of dragging and doing nothing. And I think that's what I love about jig fishing is trying to figure out what channel those fish are on, trying to figure out that cadence. And if you're fishing with somebody else, hopefully you can figure out that even sooner because, you know, two different people in the boat fishing two different ways. If one person starts catching fish, you match up to what's working. A lot of times it's angle on the line from the rod tip to the water. What, what angle is that jig going through the water? And then the cadence of that jig stroke. And sometimes, the magic is no jig stroke. Sometimes you're just letting it hang, letting it drag. And that's what we saw out here a lot today is that the less you did sometimes, the more it hung, the more it did nothing, the more these fish come up and eat it. How's he feel? Feel pretty good. A little backbone to him. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'd be a perfect one for the frying pan. Oh yeah. There we go. All right, well, we're marking a lot of fish here. At least we know what flavor they are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is that true? <laughs> nice. Nice eater size. Fry pan fish. Yep. Shore lunch fish Shore in this part lunch. of the world. Oh, well, would that taste good right in some grease right now, huh? You know, Jason, this year it's been a, a little bit strange in the fact that early in the spring we had so much bait in our water. Everywhere you looked, there was bait fish. And so we're out there with a lot of competition in the water. So one thing that we've noticed and is what we're here doing today is just slow jigging, slow drag, just a little light lift 
not being too aggressive with them. I don't think they need to chase bait. There's just so much bait in the water. Uh, so when that happens and you have a situation, a season like that, slow down your presentation just a little bit and uh, I think you'll have more success. There we go. <laughs> Love it when they stretch out that mono. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and hit spot oh. lock here. How's it feel, buddy? Oh yeah, nice walleye. Look at that. Right. Yeah, we're we'll get him in the hill. All right. There. Nice. <laughs> Beautiful. Nice. Huh? Beautiful. That's a great, great walleye. Look oh, at that. Huh? That is just gorgeous. Capitogama gold right there. <laughs> that is. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, I'll we'll get her back in the water here. You know, so you look at this structure, you know, this deep structure, you know, almost always, you know, if you can imagine these big rocks, these walleyes are at the bottom of it. You know, if you imagine like a boulder and then where it tapers off and flattens out, it's, they're usually on the bottom of it. And sometimes we get up on top because a lot of times on top of this boulder might only be 15 feet away. You know, that's how precise the boat control is. And it's funny, you'd get up on, on the top, like let's say 23 feet, 22 feet, it might be all rock bass, you know, and you slide off at 28 feet and there's a sweet spot where, you know, it's all walleyes. And so, these spots where the rock bass are, where the walleyes are, they might only be 15, 20 feet apart. I mean, that's all, you know, not less than a boat length. And so that's how critical boat control is in this type of situation. This here, this is just that Northland Fishing Tackle Deep V Jig. You can see the big eyeballs on it. But what I like about this jig is the hook. See that long shank hook. We're basically taking a small shiner, running it out through the mouth, through the gill, turning it and double hooking it so that that hook comes out further out the back and the presentation is basically do nothing. <laughs> Drop it over the side of the boat and hang. That's what these fish are wanting today. Got him? Oh yeah, good fish. All right. We spot locked over those fish, saw them on the graph. Five seconds later you're doing this. You know they're heavy when you feel it right down here in the, in the handle. It's good fish. That's a really good fish. No much better feeling that right there. Yeah, that's yeah. a good fish. Oh Here yeah. Here she comes. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. There. Oh, <laughs> nice work. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That is a nice Cabotogama oh. walleye right there. That doesn't ever get old, does it? It sure don't. All right, girl. Here we go. Thanks for the fun. There she goes. Kicked away hard, didn't she? She did. <laughs> Still mad at you. She liked her neighborhood she was living in just a minute ago yeah. better than up here. I don't blame her. Oh, that's fun stuff though. That is fun stuff, you know. Little quarter ounce jig and a shiner on a bright sunny day in the middle of the afternoon. Yep. Can't go yeah. wrong. Let's get another one. You know, this has turned into an annual trip for us. We come out here every year filming and, and just fishing and you, know, you come out here in the fall, obviously you've got great fish. We've been out here in the springtime and you know experienced great fishing, you know, and then obviously through the summer. And every time of the year has some really good bite windows that are available. But what I love about this is you can pick your poison. You know, you've got you know some of the best walleye fishing you're gonna find, you know, and then you've got a tremendous smallmouth bass population. You know, some people come out here and they use sucker minnows and catch big pike. You can target big crappies. I mean, there's just a lot you can do. But the neat thing about this is you can mix this up. I mean, some years we come up here and we just target just the smallmouths, or sometimes the walleyes are biting really good and we target just the walleyes. But a lot of times, you know, you can fish for walleyes one day and fish for smallmouths the next, or if something's not happening, you got options. And so, I can't tell you how many times people have come out here, for example, where you have a dead flat day, maybe the walleye bite's tough. Well, after you experience a smallmouth bass fishing, you might not ever want to fish for walleyes again. You know, and so there's a lot of different things you can do, and that is what makes us so special, is just the multi-species gamut, great fishing for a lot of different species of fish. You know, if you're casting or pitching jigs, you know, you can just tie that jig right up to your monofilament. We're just using six pound monofilament for something like this just because the bite's really subtle. But when you're fishing and hanging jigs right below the boat and you're trying to keep that jig vertical, something that'll really protect the six pound mono from getting twisted up, just put a small, tiny barrel swivel a couple feet above your jig. And so if you're jigging vertically all day, definitely something that'll save your line and help you catch a lot more fish because that line gets twisted, it's gonna wrap up all over your rod tip, it weakens it up, your jig's spinning. And uh, just as uh, simple as that is, that's a big help when you're fishing below the boat. Yep. How's it feel? Good. All right. Nice one. Good, good, good. Look at it, Paul. This is a good one here. 
Yeah. I mean, good one. There oh, she is. yeah, there it is. Oh! oh. <laughs> nice work, Kim. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Nothing wrong with that, huh? <laughs> They're all consistently big. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, nice fish. Look at that. We'll let you go. Thank you, sis. You know, if walleye is kind of your goal and that's what you want to chase in the spring of the year, you'll find them in shallow waters right off their, their spawning grounds early. Uh, they start to, you know, slowly go out into the reefs and the flats and the mud during the summertime. And then towards fall, you'll find them on these rock edges uh, like we were fishing today. Uh, deep structure, uh, you know, off of uh, some 10, 15 foot humps down into where it gets into that low 30s. Spring of the year, a lot of times we'll use crankbaits and, and we'll, shallow, you know, we'll fish shallow with a, a light jig. Summertime, they start going into mud flats and you can start pulling harnesses and, and uh, a lot of different uh, techniques uh, for them in the summertime. And in the fall, what I love to do is target these fish with jig and minnow, just like we did today. Uh, kitting off of those uh, rock structures and looking for them just on the bottom of those humps. And uh, I mean, you can just have a field day catching those nice walleyes on a day like today. Well, we're just gonna keep creeping along here. We've been just crawling along half a mile an hour and then we were Marking fish or spot locking and just basically just hanging the jigs. Less is more. It seems like just dragging and hanging. Keep sliding along this brake line here. There's a lot of bait fishing here. See them all over the graph. We hit spot lock here, Tim. Got some fish? Got a bunch of them right there. We just went over two of them. How's that one? Yeah, a little better. All right. Yeah, it's good fish. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a, so subtle, just barely. That's a rod bend. <laughs> just barely held on to it. Just kind of sucked on it, you know. Just held it a little bit. You know, that's the thing is that you can't control all the fish bite, right? These fish are just hanging on it. Yeah. But all that matters is they all count the same when you catch them, and they're all just as fun. Yeah, that's you good look fish. Adapt to the fold. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is a beautiful walleye. Oh, jeez. What a fun way to catch fish. <laughs> Seems like every uh, every fish we've caught here has been this quality. I mean, it's not like we're catching a lot of fish. It's just every one is good. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Just gorgeous. Beautiful fish. They look like Canadian walleyes, but you don't have to go as far. <laughs> no. yeah. Pavement the whole way. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's let her go. There she goes. To the depths below. You know, this is meticulous fishing in the sense that we're just slowly crawling along. If you can imagine, you look up on these islands, there's these big boulders, big chunks of granite. The structure is the same thing. It's almost like a, a volcano. And we're just creeping up these ledges, but it's funny, there's like a, almost like a big boulder that's 10 feet tall. You get on top of it, you catch fast. You slide down the sides of it. You know, like right now we're in, you know, 32, 33 feet of water, and that's where these big walleyes are laying, but you just have to creep along. You can definitely fish this too fast, can't you? It's just meticulous fishing. It's surgical. Yeah. Oh, you have to work the structure. It is. It's really slow. Uh, the slow. Stay with it, you know. You're seeing fish, they're not going. Be patient with them. Because, uh, I mean, it's not, it's not always a quick, quick slam bite, you know. It's you might get windows of that, but you got to kind of work into it. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I'll tell you another thing to, to keep in mind whenever you're fishing this and you're vertical and you're kind of spot locked, don't be afraid to pitch that jig out 20 feet, 30 feet, and just let it sit straight down. And that first time when you go to pick that up, be, be ready. Because a lot of times <laughs> they'll catch it on that fall, and that time there, she just grabbed it on the fall. When I picked it up, uh, this is a little heavier than normal, you know. And, sucked it in and then you're, you're ready to go so you know the other component to fishing vertically is that this structure is very complex and it's very precise i mean this is all about boat control when you come out here and try to vertically jig these fish in the sense that if you can imagine you might have a rock that's the size of a two-car garage and those fish are just around the bottom of it if you're up on it if you're down on it you're not going to catch fish and when you're even trying to mark these fish a lot of times you're trying to go up it just to try to get that separation and try to mark those fish but 
you'll find it to where 34 feet, 26 feet, it's not just an, an exact depth or a magic depth, you have to actually come in at a certain angle in order to catch them. And so it's, it's just a deal where sometimes you just have to slow down and put your head down and spend some time on these spots because you could definitely fish them too quickly and miss fish, you know, not even get bit. And so just slow down and when you mark fish below you, try to hang over the top of those fish and just give them a chance to eat. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. All right, nice job, Tim. No giant, but he's a... If we were having a fried dinner tonight, it'd be perfect. It's getting smaller as he comes up. It's a nice fish, though. A nice eater, isn't it? Yeah. That's, oh. the, that's the shore lunch fish. That's a clam <laughs> catch right there. <laughs> they all count the same. Yeah. Oh, your, your lucky day, sweetie. Your lucky day. If you get the opportunity, make sure you put Capitogamo Lake on your bucket list. It's 26,000 acres of the most beautiful scenery you'll ever see. Tons of wildlife, deer, bear, otter, eagles. It's also nestled in uh, Voyager's National Park in northern Minnesota. It is truly a vacation of a lifetime when you get up here. The fishing is fabulous. It has wonderful walleye, northern pike, smallmouth bass, perch, crappie, a little bit for the whole family. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna straighten us out here. You find a friend? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think he wants to see me. Boy, <laughs> they fight hard. Oh, look at that beauty. Yeah, just a, that's a shore lunch fish there. Yeah, a little bit, maybe too big. We'll have to measure. Yeah, that's a, that's a grease pan fish. Yeah, oh, just a man. beautiful golden wall. I can't build a prettier fish. Or a prettier place. You know, Jason, sometimes I have to pinch myself. The raw beauty of Lake Cabotogama and Voyagers National Park. It's unbelievable sitting there fishing. Kind of forget what you're doing. You, you'll be listening to some eagles, watching some otters swim around, looking at some of these majestic trees growing out of huge big boulder rocks, and then all of a sudden, boom, your rod hits, and it reminds you why you're here in the first place. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He almost had to be distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Stretching that old mono out. Just a beautiful flat day out here too. Oh yeah, look up there. Oh my word. <laughs> oh my. Look at that swimming pig, huh? Oh, that is a pig. <laughs> Get, it. Get in here, Bubba. Whoa! <laughs> oh, look at that. My goodness sake. Look at that. Just puked that up. Oh man. That's a pretty serious backbone there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a serious walleye right there. That is a beautiful fish. Man alive. Oh. I, you know, it's kind of one of those cool bites where I thought it was snagged. <laughs> I lifted it up and the snag started to move. <laughs> oh. Look that at That is a walleye. Good looking fish. All right, I'll get her in the water here. Oh, that makes a person's day. <laughs> that so. is fun, huh? Yeah. Is there a funner way to catch a walleye too oh than jigging gosh. below the boat? It's the That's best. Just it good the stuff. Best. You know, this is stuff that works pretty much most of the summer. Yeah. I mean, we're early fall, late summer right now, yep. but this is something that July, if you come out here, August, September, That's October. Exactly right. Deep rock structure, hang a jig over the side of the boat, and you're gonna get bit. <laughs>